Hi and welcome back to Sadie Spincraft. Today we are going to do about the Cheviot breed. Um, I have a little bit here in a bat and I'm going to spin it while I talk about it. So we're back with Gwen today because as you can see I still have something on Lancelot in the background. So let's talk about the Cheviot. The Cheviot originated in the Cheviot Hills on the borders of England and Scotland. Recognised as a hardy sheep as early as 1372. The Cheviots did well in those bleak windswept conditions. Um, there is a Cheviot also in the south of the country, which we call the Southies. They can be found today as far north as Sutherland or Dorset and Somerset. In the south, with increasing numbers in Wales, which are being purebred. The wool, which was once the base for the border, the border tweed company, um, industry rather, and could pay the tenant's farm's rent has now declined to be the marginal importance. Um, but it still commands the best price compared to the other breeds from the British Wool Board. It is chiefly used with the Harris Tweed and carpet industry with small amounts being used in the craft trade, like what we use. The development of the breed, let's just change that hook. The development of the breed and improved quality of the wool, 3,000 merino sheep were shipped into Berwick in 1480 with another consignment less than a century later the monks who kept a large number of sheep in the local valleys were keen to improve the quality of their produce and tried crossing them with merino but this was not a success um, it was too prone to foot rot and other things. At this time, the fawns in the borders were becoming reliant on wool, fawns, towns. Oh my God, I can't even read my own writing. That is ridiculous. The towns in the borders were becoming reliant on the wool to keep the increasing tweed mills working. So instead of, no, so instead a man named James Robson of Belford travelled around the country looking for the right stock to improve his stock. That's when he found the Lincolnshire and he returned home with three rams. The cross was successful and became highly regarded in the local hills around Belford due to their ability to produce strong sheep and more importantly with more wool so with these sheep they I do believe there was a lot more to Mr James Robson but I'd have been talking for hours And I mean ours, because the information, well, where I've sourced this information is from the British Breed Society. I do know that there is another two breeds of Cheviot in America. I haven't looked into those as I'm doing the British side. So yeah, I was quite shocked that this fleece was used for Harris Tweed, which is a Scottish Tweed. 
as far as I'm aware. And very, very sought after tweed. It's beautiful. Um, I went through that a lot quicker than I thought I was going to do. I'm sure I've missed some, but we'll have a look. No, I did get it all what I'd written down. That was three pages worth of uh, information there. I'm quite shocked it was so short. So I'm just going to carry on spinning a bit more of this Cheviot. I call it Cheviot. A lot of people call it Cheviot. But that's because I like to say things as they're spelt because, well, I'm northern. I'm a northern lass and I say it as it's spelt. <laughs> <coughs> I do like Chev Cheviot simply because it's a medium wool I wouldn't say it were a fine wool it is strong and sturdy I would like another fleece because I really enjoyed the process of it because I did have a full fleece and it is perfect for the long locks are perfect for the combs and then obviously the short locks I just I put through my drum carder. Um, I have done some research into the silk that I was on about the other day I've, I've done five dif uh, six different types of silk and I will be talking about them in another video but I won't really be showing any as I don't have that much silk I've only got mulberry silk which is the most common silk out there but we'll, we'll have a little natter about silks and you'll be shocked at two of them. I certainly was. Um, I'm also going to do some research into plant fibres so we can have a chat about those. I hope you enjoyed this video. I do know I sound like I'm reading from a book and that's because basically I'm just reading from what I've written down from what I've found out on the internet um, I do have my fiber fleece and fiber source book now that I got from our wonderful Wendy and I'll be using that also as part of the information I now get. I do know that Chevia is a, uh, the microns in it which is the diameter of each strand of fleece is between 27 and 32 microns <coughs> excuse me uh, which says it's a medium fleece um, I don't find it very coarse. I, my little princess hands do very well with it and I do like to spin it. Whereas the Derbyshire Grit Stone, which I did last week, I am not keen on and you, won't, you probably won't see me spin it as, like I said, I have princess hands and I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. So, I'm just going to be quiet now and let you listen to Gwen for a few minutes while I spin this little bit of a bat up.
So thank you all so much for joining me in the Cheviot breed study sort of like thing. It's really just the history of the English or British Cheviot, nothing to do with the American side. My view is if you are a new spinner, Cheviot is quite good or Cheviot. I'm trying to say Cheviot because most people know what that is, but I call it Cheviot. So to me, Cheviot is a really good one for beginner spinners as it is a longer staple. Not this long, obviously. It's about this long, which is what? Four inch, if that. I don't flipping know. But anyway, yeah, because of the longer staple length, it is better for beginner spinners because you've got more room to play. Um, like I say, thank you so much for joining me today. I will do these as and when I come across a British breed and I've got it in stock and I can show you the fleece as I'm talking about it. So the next one might be a while because I've got other things to be spinning and getting on with. But I will do them as, as often as I can. Uh, shearing time is coming up so I will try my best to get some Shetland and a few others so that I can show you what I'm doing. I may do just a video where I talk on British breeds as well um, as this book does really help and I also have the, like I say, the British Breed Society that I, I do look into on Google. Um, if there's anything else you would like to see me doing, please comment below. If you are new to the, to the subscribe, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on other fibery fun things. <coughs> Excuse me. And thank you all so much for my returning subscribers. It's wonderful having you all here. And all you new subscribers, like, oh my God, wow, I'm like up to 700 and 65 now so not long to go until I hit that thousand subscriber mark and we can start going live bring on the summer so that I can do some spinning in the wild there'll be a, that'll be a series of me going out into different areas of Lancashire and Yorkshire and showing you the wonders of what is around me Yorkshire is literally over that way about six miles because I'm near enough on the border and Lancashire we've got Pendle Hill and a few others like I can't remember what it's called Baden Moor and all sorts so yeah we'll do some spinning in the wild come summer hopefully there'll be a few sheepies about and they'll come up and have a gander at what I'm doing and be like hmm is that is that us is that what you'd use us for because I don't eat lamb to be fair, or mutton, because I don't like it. So anyway, off that subject, because I'm going off the beaten track, thank you all so much for watching, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, or night time. I want you to do what you love doing. No matter what it is, just do it. In these times, we need to keep ourselves sane. I love you all so much. Love and hugs to every single one of you and please stay safe Mwah. goodbye